when it comes to maximum athletic endeavors. The Ford Ironman World Championship held each year in Kona, Hawaii. It's the toughest single day event on the planet. The Ironman takes a 2.4 mile swim, a 112 mile bike ride, and an entire 26.2 mile marathon, and stacks them all together. Back, to back, to back. These are some of the fittest athletes on the planet. What we want to know is, how would a regular person, someone like you and me, do in a race like this? Forget about competing. Can a normal person even finish the race? We've got a way to find out. We're going to push an average Joe to the max and enter him in the Iron Man. For this ultimate test, our average Joe is sports science team leader, John Brinkus. He's five foot eight, 160 pounds. He's exceptionally average. I'm somewhere between amazing and embarrassing, which makes me the perfect lab rat. To show just how average John is, and ensure he doesn't have some hidden talents we don't know about. Before he begins training, we measure what's called his VO2 max. That's shorthand for the maximum volume of oxygen his body can process. A good yardstick for measuring endurance capabilities. John's measurement of 57.5 milliliters per kilogram of body weight per minute is exactly as we suspected, totally average. Ooh. Oh man, you definitely feel that you can't get enough air into your system to be able to make your body work the way that you want it to. With endurance levels like this, our scientists confirm that if he attempted the Ironman today, his chances of finishing the race are precisely zero. So John is indeed the perfect lab rat to take part in our ultimate experiment. Can this average guy possibly finish the world's toughest single day endurance event? Most triathletes prepare for up to a full year for an event like this. But we're gonna give John just three months and the clock starts now. We'll track John's attempt to turn himself from average zero to Iron Man hero throughout the show. By far the hardest thing to do in sports is to wake up. Over the course of 12 weeks, John swims 65 miles by crossing Lake Michigan. He runs 380 miles by going from Los Angeles to San Francisco. Right now my body isn't feeling great. And he cycles 1,500 miles, like riding from New York to Dallas. When you're training for an Ironman, you can never work out enough. It's like it never ends. This training increases John's lung capacity and actually thickens the walls of his heart by 10%. This allows his heart to pump more blood more efficiently. By the end of his training, he has burned 440,000 calories. That's the equivalent of burning off the calories of 10 double cheeseburgers every day for three straight months. After 12 weeks of intense workouts, John's final VO2 max test registers 64.9, 13% higher than when we started. Ooh, yeah. To put that in perspective, a world-class triathlete like Chris Maka McCormick has a VO2 max of 80.2, substantially higher than John's improved measurement. Now that his VO2 max levels have increased by 13%, we've pegged his chances of finishing the race at 13%. Can he do it? Time to find out, because it's time for the Iron Man. I'm nervous. I need to be calm. I'm not sure if I've bitten off more than I can chew right now. Time to sink or swim. The 
first leg of the race is a 2.4 mile ocean swim, equivalent to 77 lengths of an Olympic sized pool. It looks like the three months of training have paid off. John completes the swim in one hour and three minutes. And incredibly, he's only 12 minutes behind the leaders. Now he has begun the second leg of the race, the bike. It's gonna be a long time before I'm off this bike. Awaiting John and the other competitors is a 112 mile ride. That's like riding from New York City to Philadelphia. Except this ride is through searing hot lava fields with 100 degree temperatures and 40 mile an hour headwinds. Wind was blowing so hard, almost blew me off the bike. To give John the same technological advantages as elite competitors, we've outfitted him with a state-of-the-art specialized transition bike, the same model ridden by one of the race leaders, Chris McCormick. In one hour into the bike ride, John is averaging 17 miles an hour, but the leaders are doing 26. At this rate, in two hours, the leaders will be almost 20 miles ahead of John. Just what I need, a long, slow hill. Oh, man. But falling behind is not John's biggest problem. Because at only mile 26, disaster strikes. Oh! Ah! I cannot express to you how much pain I'm in. Oh my god. He's torn a critical muscle in his right hip. It's called the iliopsoas. The iliopsoas is part of a large group of muscles known as the hip flexors. These muscles stretch from the pelvis to the femur, the thigh bone, and they're the main flexors of the hip. And every pedal stroke with his injured right leg sends pain signals shooting to John's brain. I need to get off this bike. All the muscles that are attached to my hip are just seizing up. I have to figure out a way to pedal where I'm not putting any pressure on my right side. Fighting the blistering heat, daunting headwinds, and severely injured hip. Ugh, I can barely get the pedals around. All John has to do to complete the second leg of the Ironman is pedal with one leg for another 86 miles. Has John finally maxed out his body? I am trying so hard to keep it mentally together. Find out when we return with more of Sports Science to the max. Oh.